It's Madden NFL 20. Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Soldier Field. Taken from about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape, up past the 30. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Gibbs. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. They'll run on first down. Gibbs. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. territory now this is first and 10 at the 42 yard line on first down it's Gibbs and he'll get what he can up the middle three yards and that'll bring up second down that time the right guard sending him backwards and so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now depending on situations you can get the bulky guy the fast guy no matter what though he can't hold them from the gun it's a give to montgomery and he's going to take this one down inside the 45. a good productive run there on first down he winds up getting eight next to receivers they'll spread the defense out and they were able to come through with a slashing run but to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Looking to throw. Hooker. And he'll just get rid of it. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. 
So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Onto the field now come the Bears. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Fields on first down. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Aiden Hutchinson able to collapse the pocket, get to him, and drop him for a loss of a yard. Well, the very first thing they told us, Charles, was we need to apply pressure early, and I would call that early pressure a nice sack to start the game. <laughs> and on the other sideline, I just have this image in my mind of the head coach on the headset with the offensive coordinator asking him if that's exactly what he saw in his mind when he called that play. And if so, is it going to be like this all day? That's a tough one right there. After the sack here, second and 11. Here's a first carry for Khalil Herbert. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, ends up spilling it for a loss. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. On play action, Fields. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, looking from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. The offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Here's a give to Herbert. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second down and eight. On second down, a run with Herbert. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. A good sign on the opening drive. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. 
They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. A handoff for Herbert. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Third and two, Fields. Now he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We're scoreless after one. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession. They need about the length of the football here on first and goal. Herbert. is into the end zone for a Bears touchdown. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Touchdown here, Santos, to kick this one away. Fielded right around the eight. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Up to midfield. The 30. 10, 5. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Lions. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. Well, we talk a lot about explosive plays on offense. How about an explosive play on special teams? Certainly one there on the kick return for a touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. This is taken just shy of the 10. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. 
Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. On first and ten, here's Fields. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that will bring up second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Looking to throw again on second down. Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Back to throw, Fields. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And he's gonna be marked down just inside the 35. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. They'll fake the handoff, now Fields. And his throw is incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Let's do our thing. Let's do our thing. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Here's Fields. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Now Fields. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. Touchdown. Justin Fields fighting Darnell Mooney. And the Bears have taken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. 
Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Now the point after try for Santos. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive in total eight plays. And finishing it all off was Darnell Mooney with a touchdown reception. the touchdown here Santos to kick this one away takes it at the seven and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive last time out they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed and I'm sure on their sideline they're thinking to themselves okay do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Looking downfield for Jones. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. On second down, Montgomery. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. At 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Hooker. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. First and ten, Hooker. This one swung out to Montgomery. Second and six. Operating from the gun, Hooker. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 42. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. First down now, but the clock continues to move. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. It's complete to Williams. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A 
long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw. Hooker. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he's able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Are the Bears going to take over now late in this first half? And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. On first down, Fields. They'll set up the screen to Herbert. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing again on second down. Fields throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. To throw his fields. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. To the air again, Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Chase Claypool, the intended target, and it's third down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Fields. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And the Lions going to go back on offense one final time in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. But just 18 seconds remain till halftime as they come up on first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the Charles. Give me water. 
Jeez, Chuck, they cut off the halftime show again. <clears throat> Quicker than anticipated, ready for the start of the second half. Set to resume, here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick from the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Now a first down throw, Fields. And this is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. A dime look defensively for the Lions on third. Fields now to throw. He hits Mooney going across the middle. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. On first down, it's Fields. And his throw here is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Fields. Throw right side. This is into the hands of the tight end, Tunyon. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. They'll look to throw again. That's complete to Mooney. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 27-yard line. A gain of 22. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep in the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
The tackle for a loss goes to Kirby Joseph, making a great play. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Looking to throw. Fields. And he's got his man out of the slot. Complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage. The drag route can be effective when it's run well. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Up the middle they go. Herbert, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So they go option right on second and goal. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Justin Fields keeping it himself from eight yards out. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. Taken from about the 12. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in you can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially but you have to do it without pressing because pressing that'll lead you into bigger errors throwing to start the drive hooker and a quick throw here that's complete and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Operating from the gun. Hooker. And Jones has it over the middle. 
And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that could really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Back to throw. Hooker. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there as they were able to connect. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Gibbs, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Tough spot looking at second and 16 here after the big loss. Looking to throw. Hooker. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. To throw on third down, Hooker. He's got this complete to Williams. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 18. They give him 13 yards here on the play to push set of downs. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there, and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Once again, we got to get it done. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. On second down now, it's Gibbs. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Back to throw. Hooker. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Partner, I like the play call coming right after a tackle for a loss because this is an obvious passing situation, but instead they fooled them a little bit with the screen, and they wound up getting back what they lost, and then a little bit more. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. 
Looking to throw. Hooker. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back to the 24. T.J. Edwards coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Buying time to his left. And he has his receiver. That's Jones. Lions touchdown. Marvin Jones, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Lions have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Here's Badgley now to try to add the PAT. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. From the 10. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game here in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the chess match really ramps up, doesn't it? Because in these situations, what do you do? Do you run the ball and kill the clock here? Or do you try and bury them with another score? And how about defensively? Do you use your timeouts at early as opportunity? Or wait till you hit the two-minute warning? So there's a lot going into this one. Let's see how each side goes about their strategy. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Another carry for Herbert on second down. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. 40 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Complete to Mooney on the slant. And he'll be taken down after a gain of about eight as that will lead us to the two-minute warning. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. They'll run. It's Herbert. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. They'll go again with Herbert. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. 
The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Here's Herbert. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they will take a knee here. Second and 11 now. This is Herbert, and he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Let's go now. Let's go. Let's go. Pay attention. Pay attention. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to perhaps salt this one away. That is inches from the upright. It's no good. Wind to the left, and this will remain a one-touchdown game. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other, and they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout.